Hi, my name is Sally Briggs, and I am excited to give a message today that has really been speaking into my heart, oh, especially this last week. Um, I know that we all have trouble in this area. This area is called the What If Cliff. The What If Cliff. Okay, so I'm going to start with prayer. Don't turn this off. Don't leave because it will pertain to you either today, tomorrow, or the next day, but it will come up. So dear Father, I thank you. I thank you for this important message. I thank you that you put this in my heart and that I am struggling with the what if cliff right now, but you've given me the tools and you've shown me your word and you have never departed and you will never depart from me in the midst of what I'm going through. And I know so many people are going through such great trials right now. Some are greater than others, but every trial when it's personal to you, is so, um, is so difficult and so devastating, God. So I pray for those people right now who have any kind of trial in their lives, that this word would help them, Lord. You speak into their hearts, and I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, so um, my mom gave me this word today. I was speaking to her on the phone, and she has been such an occur encourager through this difficult time that that our family's been going through. Families go through difficult times sometimes, and what you have to remember most importantly is that oftentimes, or most times, you're not, you're not fighting against that member of your family. You're not fighting against flesh and blood, as it tells us in Ephesians 6. We're fighting against the enemy. We're fighting against all of his army. And he works to cause strife. He works to um, de, de or to fracture families. Um, his his greatest plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. So we have to realize we're not fighting against the attitudes of the people. We're fighting against the enemy who's behind the people who are putting the thoughts in their minds, who are giving them the words to speak. So that helps us to know that our prayers can be prayed in the right direction against the enemy rather than against the person. So right now in my family, we are having a really difficult, um, difficult time. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but it has to do with our sons who are almost 30 and 33, and my husband who has been doing business with them for about six or seven years. And my husband has decided to retire. And there's been a lot of disappointment within all of them. There's been a lot of miscommunication. And now there is so much hurt and anger and bitterness between my husband and our sons. And I'm kind of that middle person, but yet my husband is who I cleave to. You know, it says in the Bible, when you grow up, you leave your mother and your father and you cleave to your spouse and the two of you become one. And then it says the same thing about your children. Your children have to grow up. They have to cleave to their own spouse. They need to be a family unit of their own. So, but you still love family and love is the most important thing of all. Love, perfect love drives out fear. If you know how perfectly you are loved by God, that you are a treasured possession of God's, then you really truly don't have to worry about anything because he's got your back. He's got your front. He's got your sides. He's got your top. He's got your feet. He's got you covered. But, but that all is wonderful, good, and true. But what about when the what ifs come? And I, just this last few days, have been caught up in the what ifs. But what if this happens with our family? But what if it stays a long time? But what if, I'm not going to even name off the what ifs. You know your own what ifs. And they're terrible, and they cause torment. And they're rooted in fear, which is always the, the person behind that, it, or the entity behind that is Satan, is Satan. He always wants to work in fear. And so we get tormented because our thoughts start going to those places of, but what if this happens? And it's called, my mom 
claimed it, said it today, and it was perfect, the what if clip. She said, don't get close to the what if cliff. And whatever you do, don't fall over or jump over the what if cliff. Don't go there. Catch your thoughts. Think through, think about what you're thinking about. That's what Joyce Meyer always says. And her book, The Battlefield of the Mind, is amazing. Think about what you're thinking about. But don't start letting the what ifs, because the what ifs are always rooted, or the root behind them is always the enemy. He wants you to fear, and what ifs always cause fear. What if this happens? What if my family stays severed, the relationship? But don't go there. Catch the thoughts. Catch them immediately. Um, if you start to hear the what if, take that thought captive. 2 Corinthians 10, verse, I believe, 4, 5, and 6 says, I'm paraphrasing, take, take those thoughts captive. Take them captive and cast them, give them over, put them under Jesus' feet. Don't have anything to do with them. Don't let them dwell in your heart, in your mind. Don't let them root down inside of you where they can really cause the torment because that's what the enemy's working for. He wants to get deep within you so he can really torment you. And then you can be of no purpose. Your prayers lose, your prayers lose all their power and you're not standing strong with the armor of God any longer. You've gotten sucked into and over that cliff the what if cliff. So what I want to remind you is we are told in God's word, I believe it's in Matthew, of to only worry about today. We have enough worries in today, so don't worry about tomorrow. And usually your what ifs are about tomorrows. They just usually are the future. So remember, I'm in the present. I can get through this day. Choose to set your mind. In Colossians 3, it says, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on heavenly things. Take your thoughts, set your thoughts on the things that are good in your life, the things that are positive in your life, the things that you can be thankful for in your life. And then it says for us to be thankful in everything. So your what ifs aren't things you want to be thankful for, but start thinking about the things you can be thankful for and start speaking speaking. Your words are powerful. They're filled with power. The power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of life and death. So start speaking what you're hoping for, what you're believing in. Call the things that are not, that are not that way right now, but I'm believing for them to be. That's in the Bible. Call things that are not as though they were, as though they are right now. So we need to speak, and I've been praying with my husband, and I've been thanking, thanking God for our family, for our family who is bound in love, for our family who are all believers, for our family. I thank you, God, that we're going to go together. We are going to stay united as family. I thank you, God, for the amazing futures. I thank you, God, for the wives, the fiancés that our sons have right now and that we will have grandchildren in our future and our sons will have homes to live in that are their homes. And you start thanking God because in Romans 10, it tells us to confess with your mouth and then believe in your heart. What you confess in your mouth and believe in your heart. But the confession has to come out of your mouth first, truly, before your faith grows enough to believe it in your heart. And when you believe it in your heart, then you can have the peace that passeth all understanding that guards your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. You can have the peace and you can rest trusting that God is moving. So speak, confess the power words. Speak the words of life into your situation. Catch your thoughts, especially your what ifs. Don't go over the what if cliff because it's really, really difficult to pull yourself out once you've gone over. So stay with your thoughts centered on God, your hand firmly grasping his hand that he will take you through this trial 
He will take you through this storm and you're going to come out stronger on the other side in your perseverance, in your faith, in your love, and you'll have a testimony that will be strong for others. So think about what you're thinking about. Take those what ifs captive and don't let them capture you. So dear Father, I thank you for this message. I pray that it touches each person's life who has heard it right now, God. And I pray that it makes an impact. And we are all able to take our thoughts captive or you wouldn't tell us to do so. So I'm reminding myself to take my thoughts captive. And each one hearing this, take your thoughts captive. Don't let them get in there. Don't let them root in. And don't go over that what if cliff. And I pray this and I believe in your sweet word and your promises, Jesus. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. God bless you all and have a really beautiful day.